Hello, friends. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Uh, let's see. I am a, a little bit behind here, so I haven't created our page yet, but we can do it in real time. Uh, okay. Perhaps, uh, Bruce, are you there as well? I see you, but just yes. checking in. Okay. Hey, good day. So uh, I just got out of meeting out of a meeting, Bruce. Uh, that they said, you know, they still want to. They're they're interested in the Pico Lab stuff um, because they're doing some. They have a customer that that has uh, an IoT use case, uh, and we we had mentioned you guys. Uh, so you know, it's early days. Uh, no no idea how um, a collaboration could um, be possible. Maybe it would be nice to get an idea or a sense. Um, I mean, obviously Pico Labs is uh, supposed to be helpful for students who are, you know, uh, learning about IoT and, and, and wanting to implement things. But I didn't know if you guys have kind of um, partners and, and like market use cases and stuff like that, or if it's um, purely academic. And I, I mean, no, no disrespect by saying purely academic, hopefully, uh, Hopefully th that doesn't come off badly. <laughs> no, no, that that's fine. It's uh, it's mostly academic, but um, it was used in an actual product for uh, um, connected vehicles. Okay, and and was that like a did was that a, like a positive? Uh interaction and do you feel like it was useful for uh, Pico Labs uh, as a as an organization or yes it, it was it predated Pico Labs per se ah uh, uh, okay so it, it was an act, it was an actual company that Phil Windley ran and it, he had I don't know dozens of clients uh, dozens of customers and it only ended because <clears throat> The manufacturer of the device that you plugged into the car uh, ceased operations. Okay. Yeah, fair. Roots ID knows all about uh, <laughs> runways in terms of uh, projects ending and uh, you know work work discontinuing. So I understand that. Yep. Uh, since then, Phil has used it in a class that he teaches every year. Gotcha. So, okay, very good. I'm using it on an internal project as a proof of concept. Okay. Uh, there, very... there are a few dozen people who know how to, how to set up a Pico system. Okay. Almost and... entirely Phil's former students. Gotcha. Even uh, Telegram Sam even knows how to do it. Oh, interesting, okay. And then, can you compare it uh, in terms of SSI? Do can you do? You, are you aware of other IoT uh, projects uh, or related things? And can you compare kind of Pico Labs to those other projects? Yeah. So I'm a member of of an IoT uh, special interest group at DIFF. and so, but that group is working mainly at. Um, at a don't really want to say higher level, but at a, a level closer to concepts and marketing and white papers and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, to me, my understanding is that group is not that technical. A heavy, like the IoT group at Diff, is that correct? Yes, I'm. I'm probably the most technical person there. And yeah. I have. I have a little trouble actually br bridging because I don't. I don't think the same way. Uh, they do. Yeah. Uh, I've listened to to some of the meetings, some of the recordings, and the, yeah, it was like more business focused rather than development focus. Yeah, they're, um, yeah. They're, um, trying to figure out where it, where SSI fits into the Internet of Things in various industries. I mean, everybody is is jumping on board uh, Internet of Things devices, 
and we, we would like to see them doing self-sovereign identity of some sort in that world. Gotcha. And then any other uh, projects that you know of um, that are SSI IoT related? No, I don't really. Okay. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, I think I saw, yep, Roto hop in too. Cool. Great. Uh, so today is the, oh, hi. How are you? Hi, everybody. Very good. Good. Roto, welcome back. He's, <laughs> Thank you. He's, he's still across still the world. Still going. <laughs> still going. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I'm able to show, yeah. Yeah, great. Okay, this is the uh, February 13th, 2023, uh, Aries Didcom V2 Working Group. Uh, uh, please be aware of the uh, Hyperledger Antitrust Policy and the Hyperledger Code of Conduct. And if you would like, please add yourself to the attendees list. Uh, Bruce, you you were left over from, from last week, so you're already on there. <laughs> uh, let's see, and so was I, by the way. Um, Okay, if we want, we can uh, just go around real quick. And if anybody has anything uh, specific that they want to talk about in terms of uh, Didcom V2 related things, um, and then I'll, I'll, I'm will i happy to go through the status of everything. Or if you want to wait till we go through the status, that's fine too. The only thing I have is that there's like the Open Wallet Foundation has a Didcom V2 presentation today. Yes, thank you. When that is, uh, let's see. That is the hour before the DIFF Didcom the user, user group. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'll be leading the DIFF Didcom uh, user group. So any support and help uh, is much appreciated so that that's a, a good combo too but okay that means today is full didcom day for uh <laughs> for roots it <laughs> yes. yeah alex so, will be what, what's working. gonna be that, that presentation the, before the user group I, sorry i missed uh, yeah uh, open wallet then i think add alex, open I, wallet okay good good oh from some uh, okay you want some right yeah yeah i'll tag along um I haven't talked to Sam exactly how we're going to break it down yet, but I'm sure we'll, we'll figure out a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basic, basically, Sam wants Alex to kind of be the, hey, I've actually done, you know, Didcom V2 and, uh, you know, I can, it, it's not just the theory that Sam, you know, will be presenting. So, so Alex is providing some, you know, uh, tangible experience. Yeah, so what I'm planning on doing is kind of like uh, yeah, exactly speak a little bit, a couple of minutes about like my experience developing the v 2 protocols and then run through the Jupyter Notebook real quick and then um, uh, yeah, like do the basic message flow that we have between Alice and Bob and like show them like how relatively straightforward it is once you already have public mediators available. Uh, so we can kind of like also like market our mediator that way, quote unquote. The Jupyter Notebook that you're referring to is from your JFF activities or? Uh, no, so Rodolfo has like a sample uh, that like has a basic message between Rodolfo, between Alice and Bob. And like, I kind of like, I, um, I tweaked it a little bit. Uh, so yeah, just like using that one to send a basic message without like actually like issuing credentials and uh, anything like um, that way, yeah. Fair, okay, great. Um, okay, so yep, uh, I'll try to attend that for sure. I'll at least be listening in. Uh, good. Okay, anything else pressing that we want to add to discussion topics? Um, yeah, okay, let's go through status real quick. Um, Aries agent test harness. Uh, I, I keep saying I'm going to work on this and I, I have done some, but most of what I'm doing is um, trying to uh, integrate a, an agent uh, that's a non Aries um, specific agent uh, in into it. And well, it, it took time and then I since have been 
uh, pulled off into other things. <laughs> so that, that keeps happening. Uh, but I guess that's how test harness life goes sometimes. So I don't have uh, really anything to report on there. Again, the goal is to eventually start filling in AIP 3.0, especially DIDCOM V2 related tests and to show, well, for, for me personally and for Roots ID essentially to show this um, agent from from outside of the Aries ecosystem uh, being integrated. So that's all I have to say about that. Anything for Aries Ascar? Uh, in terms of Aka Pai, uh, you know, we haven't had Hakan back since uh, he's switched roles and yeah, I haven't heard. Maybe I should ping him in the uh, Discord server and just see how he's doing. Uh, I, I mean, we really appreciated his contributions before, but yeah, I also understand how <laughs> events, o OBE, right? Overcome by events. <laughs> All right, so I'll try to, I'll try to reach out. Okay, Aries framework JavaScript. I, I. Still have not seen any uh, movement on um, the pull request for Didcom v2. So that remains in on hold as well. Um, yeah. Uh, I have seen some movement in terms of OIDC. Uh, and it's possible that that's partly um, being fueled by uh, EBSI, which is the European Blockchain Service Infrastructure. It looks like they uh, are an OIDC-based uh, communication SSI stack. So um, it's possible that AFJ is seeing movement in OIDC for that, but that's just speculation on my part. OK. Uh, Picos um, as was, area agent. Yeah, any updates for that, Bruce? This was the off week for the students. They meet with us every other week. And okay. Tomorrow, so I have nothing new to report there. I'm hoping gotcha. the messages over didcom v2, but uh, I'll do that tomorrow. Okay, very good. Uh, no, I haven't seen any movement uh, for didcom for the Swift framework. Uh, in fact, the last thing I saw on that, I think, was a Didcom V1 thing, but that was quite a while ago. And then Veramo, anything on that, Alex, you've seen for Didcom V2? Uh, yeah, actually. So, yeah, Veramo, they last week, I think, they merged uh, mediation. So now their agent will be able to do mediation. And I was talking to Nick, and uh, he's saying that they're going to like publish like a mediator, like a Veramo mediator uh, soon. Um, so... Yeah, that's the update there. Oh, yeah, Great. I looked through their, their PR and everything. Uh, yeah. Nice. Okay, very good. And yeah, I think, um, yeah, Roots ID's uh, mediator, you know, continues to be useful. Uh, that, that uh, you know, I, I hadn't really uh, understood how often that that might come up uh, in different situations but yeah having a mediator out there uh, you know seems to be uh, quite useful for the community so this is good to see more mediators possibly coming online is that a v2 mediator yeah, yeah the, uh, ah we talking about veramo or roots id and that both either yeah both, yeah, both. <laughs> both. Well, maybe I can get the student talking to you. Yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, okay, uh, mobile. I don't have any updates on that. I haven't been attending those meetings lately. Just too busy. Um, I haven't heard anything going on about the Aries mediator service. That any up? That I assume is V1. That's a good question. Uh, I don't know, actually. Maybe I assumed uh, it was V2, but that's probably a silly assumption, given 
given uh, what we know about the Aries ecosystem. <laughs> yes, I, I expect this this call to be the leading edge of that. Yeah, yeah, fair. Uh... Okay. How about for um, Aviary Tech, their Didcom uh, TypeScript impl? Any any movement on that? Anyone seen? Oh, I was on mute. Uh, yeah, I was talking to Brian. There's like uh, he's been working on YDC lately. Uh, so yeah, like no movement on the on the Didcom stuff of things, but yeah. Um, have we seen a good comparison between OIDC and Didcom? Uh, I mean, uh, oh, we had like an IAW. <laughs> yeah, have we seen like a published one that we can reference? Um, because uh, more and more, especially with the, the EBSI, um, you know, Right now, being focused on OIDC, I feel like I need to be well versed on <laughs> the differences. Uh, OIDC was new to me, you know, until I came to I or until I was introduced to it at IAW. But I don't claim to have. Well, I, I, at least what, what I know is OIDC is server to client, right? So that's the main difference. Yeah. Okay. So the, the the server issue credentials, and you are the client, and that's it. But that's the only, the only thing that I know. Yeah. So more web two kind of yeah. model. More hundred like, percent. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's like a federal it's a uh, yeah, federal like an entity system. Uh, it's like a like a federation type of a model. So it, it, right. So so a bit uh apples to oranges comparison, but um because of <clears throat> Uh, but it, obviously, you know, major overlap in terms of uh, issue credential and things like that. Yeah, it's like comparing a YDC for VP and VC with uh, issue credential and present proof. Yeah. That would be like a better comparison. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, okay. Uh, Carrie, working group. Okay, I, can I think I can share the this uh, the link. This is a PR. Well, it's not a PR. It's actually a post on the this repo on the Keri uh, DID Keri Resolver. Okay. So I published. Yeah, I published like a hello world showing how a Keri can use as a alternative to PR DID. Great. Um, and then there's a utility that has all the other functions using the, the Keri Pi, it's in Python. Great. Is, do you, um, do, do you want to give us kind of uh, I can, your, your, oh, your yeah. high level, what's your high level takeaways as you're going through let, this? I, I, can, I can show the, okay, let, let me run the, the script and I can go. Okay, yeah, that would be awesome. Share a screen. Yeah, let me stop sharing. Stop share. Do you see the? Yeah, looks good. Okay, so if I run, I'm gonna just run this. Then, then I we can go through the code. But uh, the idea, the idea is this one: is using the same uh, Sigma Didcom library. But instead of using PRDID, I plug in the, the carry DID. So in, in, this is a hello world where Alice created DID, and you see the, this is the a carry DID, how it look, looks like. It's did carry and this this identifier, right? Uh, but this this in order to resolve this identifier in carry, you, you need to, to go and talk to the agent. Or we need to come up with with a with an alternative. And the, the way we we found 
that can be implemented easily. It's like adding, take this as a DID URL and add a, a query parameter that is the key event with this long base 64 path, right? And th this basic 64 path, uh, you can decode it and actually get the inception event of the query. So in, in that in that event, you're gonna find all the extra information that uh, that you need as, as an alternative to DDP, or that is the encryption keys, the sign increase, and the service endpoint. Can you so the, and, and the, yeah. Can you can you compare that to how peer did works? I mean, it sounds familiar. Right. Yeah. So so if you, I compare this with the length I rate. If you have a DDD peer here, this is a, a like a similar DID that I plug in just to compare the length. So this is a DDD peer, a full DDD peer, and then you have this this one as a carry DID. That includes that include the the key event, right? Mm -hmm. So once you have the the a, D, a, a peer DID like like this one, you go and, and call a library, and the library can resolve that in a, in a document that shows you the the um, the keys, the encryption key, the signing keys, and the service endpoint. Right. right. In this case, in did carry. You can do the same, plug in, in a library. That is what, what, I, what I did. And decrypt that part and resolve the key event. And actually, you can validate that this key event that is encoded here is the one that produces the. So that's one of the fancy thing of, uh, fancy things of carry that you can validate that this part is the one that produced this identifier. So everything is, is in, in, in the same DID, is self-contained, and you can resolve it and get the, all the information needed. And after that, once you resolve it, in the next messages, you don't need to use the full DID. I can just pass you this one, the short version. Right, because you're you, right. Yeah, because you already resolved it, and, and that's gonna be really short. And that's, I think, is, was the main reason why Daniel asked for something like that, because digit PRs were really, really long, right? Once you start using this digit PR in, in DID, digit com messages, you need to pass all, all this DID for the uh, sender and the receiver, and that's keep a lot of information flowing and flowing again. So if if you, if you just pass it the first time and the second time you use the short one, that's gonna be I think it's efficient. So Roto, do okay. both parties then have their own copy of the key event log? Yes. Once once yeah. Also okay. This is gonna be um like a, we call a non-transferable uh, identifier carry identifier. Because they cannot be rotated, so it's gonna be just like it appear. It's gonna have you go, you create that with all the information, and then you cannot change it. You cannot change the keys and, and not the information of the document. Uh, same way as you as you using did PR, I think is the algo number two. I think is the one. So you you cannot change it, right? right? And but okay, but once you res once you resolve the first time, you store it. If you, if you have the a cache like a cache in, in your your Asian, then every time you see this short DID, you can you know what to do, right? So you're saying that the long form oh. of the did carry has the ability to rotate, but the short form of the did carry is like that current whatever the current state oh no 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 just this, this one mm -hmm. is you you cannot rotate it it's, it's like a fix uh, so like an good what? question yeah so is the idea that the long one you send it in the out of bound invitation and then all the other messages you send the short one right that's 
because the autobahn invitation yeah, in this case yeah but, but for, become... for example in yeah in, in the autobahn you, you're gonna send this one but the other party and maybe bob will message. reply to that they need to also send the long one uh his long long one to to alice right 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 so like the handshake like the first messages that we exchange they're slightly heavier but then all the messages we exchange afterwards with the same session keys quote unquote would be like smaller because we can resolve those keys uh, right right that yeah, that, that's what, what yeah that's the idea so what this is what what i did is alice so if you go to the to the messages alice so created the basic message yeah yeah you the, the alice created the, the basic message with the long d and then you're yeah with the long d yeah. then Bob's, yeah. because it has the full the full state here you can decrypt it but that bomb, uh, Bob, when, once you want to uh, uh, reply to Alice, they can use the short DIDs because yes, uh, yes, uh, most and parties then, already have DIDs. Yeah, they and have the stuff. Right. So if you right. want to rotate, uh, so like Len said, if you wanted to rotate, you would just send like a message with like a, a new long carry DID and then. Uh, from one end and then the other one, they can still reply with their previous carry DID. Yeah, you, you mean when I rotate the DID? That's what yeah. I would say. No, it, yeah. yeah. Did, did the com already have all the mechanisms to rotate DID? So uh, there is a, a field in the in the, yeah, the message design. that is called from prior yeah, yeah. it's called from prior yeah. so you 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 send a new message and you say my previous did was this one so you have a like a challenge and then, you the new one is yeah. Yeah. right okay. yeah okay. yeah yeah so but, but because i think i i don't maybe uh, lance you're asking that because you, you're trying to see if you can use in carry that can be rotated the the i mean the the where the keys can be rotated that was for your question yeah i mean my i guess in everything that i've learned about carry i always hold on to the fact that the pre-rotation mechanism that carry talks about is um by far the most core value that that yeah. carry provides and so i am surprised that we're talking about um wow. a yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that can't be rotated you're, you're right because okay this is the first step just to have something yeah. similar an alternative to peer did just for that. Okay, right. So, so, so this is, is this what makes it carry light? Is this why we call it carry light? Yeah, that's what we call, yeah. Uh, Daniel's call at the beginning, carry light. And okay. You don't want to call it that. Oh, but okay, yeah. sure. Because, because you use this one, can be self-addressable, so you, you need to be resolved in line. And, and because the, the com already have a mechanism to rotate the DID. So you are not talking you are talking about ephemeral DIDs. Yeah. Yeah, that's to appear to pitch a long uh, like the, the the real DID that you want to use to keep it for a long, long period of time that need the keys to be rotated. That's another story. Right? Okay. So for, for that one uh, there are other mechanisms for producing the DID. So the DID is going to be always the same, this short one. But the what you include in the query parameters are going to be different. In this case, in 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 for the DPR alternative, we include the the inception event, but the only event that this this uh, AID or this uh, DID is going to have, right? But if you're gonna rotate it, instead of adding the key event, because there are gonna be multiple key events, the key event log, you add a, an UBI. So the UBI, what it tells is, is tell, okay, you have to go to that witness or whatever agent and ask for the full key event log. Oh, so right. that's gonna be a same option of, of like a, a DID carry, a long form. And the third option is instead of 
giving this Ubi, you're gonna just send that and based on your on the ecosystem that you are, uh, you're gonna call like a super watcher that everybody knows that exists and unresolved that DID. So for example, if we in our case, if we use a Cardano as a blockchain and we have a super watcher that we know that all the identifiers created in, in Cardano can be resolved by this uh, watcher, we can call call it and, and, and ask for the full key event log. But that's okay. That was a lot of things uh, that is not needed for DDT Conway. Okay, gotcha. So there is no connection between the ephemeral carry dids and the persistent carry dids or am I right okay yeah yeah, gotcha. yeah well, well, the, the, Sa same way did peer and whatever you're it's gonna be did. the yeah right yeah the the, the DID is, is gonna be the same but the what you the needs of one or the other is, is different right in in the simple simplistic need for did it come you just yeah. need the inception event and you can paste all the inception event in the in the same in the same DID form and then remove it when when once you you cache all the information. Okay. This is really cool. Um, Rodo, would you be able to share this sample output in some way? Like could you check it in as in into this repo as as sample a, a sample run? So, yeah, I think uh, yeah, it's already I copy paste the uh, you get the let me did I copy last did I copy because I'm sharing the screen and cannot find the where's the chat? Oh the chat mm -hmm. yeah you have to go up uh yeah and, yeah hit the on chat the, on the chat yeah yeah on the chat I, you know, on the chat I paste the, the repo where this uh, demo is included. Yes so I'm... you can go and just run I'm I'm just wondering for those of us who who uh, are not Python programmers, but would like to look at this. Sample, mm -hmm. Could you could you add a sample output file to the repo? Oh yeah yes okay yeah sure the, yeah, the, yeah I can I can also add a, like a readme or something like that yeah yeah thank you this this is great yeah that is great Roto thanks for walking us through that and sample output okay awesome uh let's see then I have any more questions on that since we're on it I mean certainly uh our next uh, bullet point for status is uh trust over IP trust spanning uh protocol uh, and so obviously carry has been um, a hot topic and obviously did come also uh, has been discussed. And so the better we can understand how these things will could, can work together, I think the better that we can understand how they fit in the conversation for the trust spanning uh, protocol and beyond, you know, obviously there's multiple layers to that, so really good anything else uh, on the carry stuff okay no no uh, i think yeah okay yeah great okay so i guess i can share again and oh, terrible. one quick question uh, so i guess like in the in the data resolver how do you store the dids if you have like cache dids? Is that a particular like to carry it? question or you mean that in general? No, like in did come like, right? Like how do you know that you can use a cache did instead of a long form did? Oh, well, how I resolve that in the code is like, I, I try to find if you have the, if you receive a short version, you, you see if that is stored in your memory or in, 
your this or whatever you speak. And if not, you are out, right? If you, if you oh, don't I have the, the cash enough. version, you, you're out, you're right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. Okay, yeah, never mind. That was, yeah. Is that, it, that's just an agent specific thing? That's not really a didcom specific thing? Or how right, do you right, view right. that? Yeah, like, like the agent implementation side of things. Yeah, I guess like whenever like you receive yeah, an auto you, you Yeah, receive... there, there, there's, a, there's a problem if, if you receive, a, like suppose that your cash is no longer valid, it's corrupt or whatever, you, I think you are out. And, and probably yeah. you need to send something to the other party. Yeah, I don't know how. Yeah, but you don't even know where to send it to, right? Because your cash is out. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, your cash is out. Right. Don't don't uh, lose. You need. Yeah, call my phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Fair enough. So yeah, like I guess like it adds this extra like edge case per se. Uh, but yeah, that's the only thing. Uh, but yeah, I like it because I like, can decrease the size of the message, and like you usually don't rotate bits that often, so I think it's a it's a fair trade off. Yeah, can we talk about um, kind of the practical uh, point there that you're making, Alex? Because I haven't done a ton of uh, you know real world uh, did come. Um, how 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 long do we think a conversation um, will will live on one of these um, ephemeral bids? Right, like you know, let's say that we 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 start a conversation, and you know, we've got our 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 did peers or our our carry, you know, our special carry uh, dids. Should I just call them ephemeral dids in general? Is yeah. that yeah? Yeah, I mean, like okay. I would use them for like an interaction, right? Like whatever, like a session is like an interactions. Like I think of them as like session dids almost. So if we if we take this Zoom session that we're talking about, would we have all negotiated new ephemeral dids to start this meeting? Uh. Yeah, yeah, we can, uh, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, like best practices, right? Like you're supposed to rotate keys and do all that kind of stuff. So like our agent should automatically do it for us. Like we shouldn't have like the same meeting with the same keys until we get hacked. We need to create a new one, right? We should like create a new one like every single time. <laughs> so yeah, the regular rotation for every new session uh, is yeah, a, per a protective mechanism for us but there is some um, overhead to it. Yeah, like similar to like TLS session, like at some point, like you need to refresh your your authentication token and like you need to do like a new key exchange and like uh, like reset the, the connection. Uh, yeah. Okay. So maybe would it make sense for this type of dates to have like an, like an expiration time for the cache? Like hey, like in in did uh, did didcom already resolve that? That that's the great thing of didcom. So you have a, a way to rotate the DID. You you have a ephemeral DID that ephemeral means that you you discard it. If you have compromise yeah. or whatever, you discard it, and you have a way to to uh, to include. I say this is my new DID, and mm -hmm. the DID can can be from a different method, right? And change everything. So suppose that, that you are using a DID from one method, and later you yeah, see right. that okay, this yeah. method is no, no, no longer a no longer trusted method. I want to change this one because it's more okay. Yeah, I don't know, well, more secure. You just ro rotate the DID. You do not. You do not rotate the keys. You rotate the DID itself. And I assume you arrange that somehow out of band uh, using a different right method, not using didcom itself oh, uh, oh actually, actually in, in no in didcom you you did that in band so that's that's in one of the features of didcom so so the right. initial the initial setup of a session 
or we'll call it an interaction, uh, requires some out of band. But once you've done that, you're saying that uh, the there is a mechanism in the spec here for rotating the actual did instead of rotating keys. Right. Yeah, and that's one yeah. of the one of the main yeah features of the version. Yeah, so like you will send like your old did and your new did and like uh, did come will handle like the crypto card, like you like make sure that like you sign, you have control of your keys and do all that. Yeah, interesting. So you can do key rotation technically with doing did rotation. If your right. did is just key. Right, correct. it would be kind of the thing. That's correct. Yeah, you do did rotation. Okay, this is great. This shouldn't be new to me, but I guess it is. I've heard it before, but <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the way it works is you you, you send when when you want to rotate the your DID, you send a new message with your your new DID in the message, mm -hmm. but also add this field that is called from prior. That you, this is a, is a is a field that has the is a JWT um, token that includes the signature of the old DID. So the receiver can check that you are the owner of the old DID and validate that you have included everything. So that then you 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 the receiver say okay this this guy is now is using this new DID. And you already validate he's the same, the same people, the same person. That's that's great. Thank you, Lance. Would you be kind enough to put this tab's URL in the chat? Absolutely. And I'm with you 100%, Bruce. Essentially, you know, I, I've got no ego on this, and it feels like, oh, I should have definitely known this. But whenever I heard did rotation or key rotation, my mind just said, oh, these are the same things. Like I, you know, I have no reason to. Uh, <laughs> To, to go look into this and yeah, really, uh, I totally should. Bro, you can technically rotate dids and keep the same keys. Oh, really? Right, because like, you can put like the same keys on two different like store, like two different storage mechanisms. So like, right, like if you want to like store them somewhere else, you can have the same keys and have like different div method resolvers to, to fetch those keys. Uh, yeah. Now, would that still work with a carry self-certifying did? Yeah, I mean, like it's just uh, they're just keys. Like in in the cal, those you have just uh, keys in there. So as long as you have, you can store those public keys in like a right, like on on chain uh, or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, and put them there too. Or like on IPFS, some for example, I don't know. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I'll have to co connect those concepts in my mind better. Because the so the the self certifying part versus did peer or did key. Is there? Can we expand on that a little bit? Again, it feels like something I should know, but uh, I, I'm fuzzy. And if if we want to move on, we can. But uh, Roto yeah, was I'm talking. Not sure about... I yeah, I'm not sure. Like I'm personally like knowledgeable enough to speak on like self-certifying identifiers uh, yet. So like I don't quite understand. Uh, like I mean. Yeah, like what you're asking per se. So yeah. Well, so so yeah. Roto uh, had said that uh, oh, you know, here's one of the nice m mechanisms of carry uh, that it is uh, you know self-certifying uh, identifier, uh, which you know if I if I think about the diagrams that I've seen for carry, right, it's this strong binding between uh, keys and identifiers and controller, um, but then. When I now that we're in my mind, I'm doing a comparison between did peer uh, and carry. 
I think it reveals that I don't really have a strong sense of what it means that it's that that binding is strong. Like, is it does did Pierre have that same strong um, three way right, binding? Right. Yeah, that, that, that's right. Because once you receive a, a peer DID, you, you can decode everything and get all the public keys in there, right? So the, the identifier is itself the DID document. So that's yeah. what we call, yeah. I think of it like you don't need a did resolver. Like if the identifier has all of the data, you need to resolve it in itself without like a, a did resolver per se. So, like you need so, to transform the identifier to do something to get the data out of it. That's my understanding. Uh, okay, so um, for so, I think that what Sam has said uh, is essentially dids that require mechanisms outside of the identifier. Uh, there's a weakness there then, right? That, right. that, uh, for instance, I guess he would say probably a did web or something like that. If, if, if now that domain is hacked, you need to, you need to rely on the resolver. Right? Yeah. Like you need to translate right. that's, that's, that's where the problem comes in. But with, did, uh, with did peer and this did carry, uh, that, that Roto's describing, you don't have to re rely on a resolver, right? It's. We're saying that it's encoded in. It's pretty much base sixty four encoded the data yeah. in there, so like it's, it's uh, nothing else to, to do. Okay. And then the the okay, and then the difference we've talked about before with did key is that the did key is the same as did peer, but only allows you to have a public sign. There's... There's no service yeah. endpoint in the did document. Yeah, and not, and not encryption. Yeah, yeah. Okay. fair. And just one, one, thing, one key uh, for signing, and that's it. Yeah, it's like a PEM file. Think of it as like a PEM file. It's just another way to express a public key, like another format, like right. a JW key, way of expressing right. like a key format. Well, when we say, though, that you can't, uh, Okay, so uh, I, for a second there, I was thinking, okay, I'm I'm strong between these three things and you know how they work. Uh, but then, now that you're saying one key, okay, yes, fair, because you were saying that the identifier could be tied, or you could have. <laughs> um, yeah, I was thinking that it's the service endpoint that is uh, the difference. Or why did key uh, is not useful with did com. Maybe this isn't the best form for me to work these things out in my brain. But uh, anyways, I don't mind speaking out loud. So I'll, I, we can, I'll, I'll, I'll chew on it for a little bit. But uh, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'm in the same state, uh, Lance, I think, except I'm not quite as uh, as, as verbal. But what you're saying resonates. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, um, all right, so uh, Trust Over IP, uh, I think Daniel presents uh, this week. Uh, I think he presents his proposal. Uh, there was a, a a lot of back and forth uh, between Daniel and um, and Sam. Let's get a link to that because that was nice and valuable as well. Um, that was here. Just need to. Yeah, nice long uh discussion assuming i have the same i'm just going to scroll i know that's annoying but uh yeah 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 this is the nice long discussion that i recommend i'll post the link here if anybody's uh, following the trust spanning protocol stuff and uh it's nice to learn from that and try to the, the one of the things that i love about it is right which it's, it's this kind of first principles uh debate of you know well what is what are the first principles that we need to focus on for that layer and in a lot of ways that's helping me to kind of 
separate the this the, the incredible complexities that come with uh, didcom and carry and all these things and you know trying to uh it's helping me to to separate those into their constituent parts so yeah, I uh, that's going to be that's going to be interesting i really appreciated the link to um to the to the video presentation that you put in last week that was yes a fascinating thing I thought so too. And then, were you, did you uh, were you at the meeting on Wednesday, or have you listened to the the kind of follow on? No, no, I haven't. If you have a link to that, that would be super too. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I attended the meeting, so I hadn't looked for a link for it. But uh, yeah, it's got to exist. So if I if I come across it, definitely. Good. Okay, good. Back and forth between Sam, Daniel, and others. Okay, and then Daniel presents his proposal this week at the Wednesday TSP something task force. Yeah, I think. Okay, good. All right, so we did talk a bit about uh, Didcom, uh, okay, caching and those things. Uh, yeah, this Didcom V1. Um, so Sam did uh, supply a link from that's just on didcom.org, which, you know, again, that's one of those things where it's like, oh, why didn't I think to look there? Um, but here, let me post it here. Um, Introductory, where is this thing? It was on Didcon. Oh, I think it's on the guidebook. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. It, yeah, now I know why I couldn't find it because even now, even though I knew it existed, it, it wasn't so easy for me to find. So maybe that says something about the uh, guidebook needing some updates, but I will post that on here as well. Okay, so that's a simple explanation of the benefits of upgrading from Didcom V1 to V2. Um, it's, it's probably worth walking through that real quick. Uh, so let me pull that down here. It will have to Okay, so... Um, so the version of Didcom in the Ares community was version one, and this uh, spec describes the new version uh, and the changes between them. Um, well, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're almost out of time. Before, instead of me going through this, I mean, we can, but uh, is there anything else that we need to cover in the next six minutes or even less? Because I have another meeting I got to jump into. <laughs> just just want to make sure. We're not missing anything. I missed the um, the Aries uh, Wednesday working group, so I'm not sure how much they did on the AIP three. It was a short meeting because um, <clears throat> Sam Sam Curran what had another uh, had something come up, and Stephen Curran ah. moderated the meeting, uh, being unprepared. It was it was still an interesting meeting. Yeah, a non creds, right? Because I think I sent that to Rodolfo since he's done a bunch of non creds work, right? Didn't Stephen talk a bunch about uh, a non creds, especially revocation? Yeah, he's, he, yeah, he talked about yeah, yeah, just the yeah the time frame from when asking for revocation. So he spent a lot of time on that, I think. Which I I'll admit I don't really i mean i've been listening kind of but i've always been working while they've been talking about the time frame stuff and <laughs> so I, I don't pretend to understand it at all but uh someday okay so uh yeah then i assume there hasn't been much movement uh on that and we talked about the test harness stuff and possible tags for these things. And then, yeah, essentially the TSP is kind of related to the grand unified theory. Okay, anything else that uh, we need to highlight or should highlight? No, this is not valid. 
Okay, good. So then let's quickly, I think, go through this. Uh, okay, summary of changes. Formalization of methods used in V1 at JWM uh, envelope, ECDH1PU, standardized form of AuthCrypt. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get decent at uh, understanding the uh, nuance between some of these crypto things. Um, but yeah, if anybody wants to say anything in terms of, of these two things, I mean, we know that there's uh, uh, there was a change in the Aries uh, envelope um, uh, spe specification. Uh, so I think there's two separate RFCs for the different envelopes. Uh, practical changes. All right, did exchange is not needed anymore. We've seen lots of talk about this, uh, you know, as uh, like Hakan and others are trying to get uh, implementations going this is kind of a big deal because they have designed in, you know, some form of connection uh, that requires did exchange and it doesn't work that way in V2 anymore. I think each message essentially um, can stand on its own, but I don't know much more than that. Anybody want to say anything about that? I mean, like if you want to exchange it, like Roto said, now it's easier. You just gotta like create this new message with like the same from with the from prior, and uh, that's how like you do your did exchange. Uh, so it's kind of like built in the spec, like the ability to rotate it. Okay, I hadn't I hadn't connected that. That's um, how you start, as well as how you rotate. So maybe yeah, so that's like, extra useful. Yeah, well, yeah, like an ideal workflow, like you would like create like an out of bound with a did peer, and then you would switch to a did that like you like feel like more secure towards, right? Like that's kind of what we were talking earlier. You yeah. Switch to like a did method that's more secure to do like your actual like issuance or whatever. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Anyways, maybe maybe it would be good to, uh, I meant to read through this and I haven't, so maybe it'd be good to read through it and we can talk about it um, next week. Uh, it sounds like a lot of it is, uh, or it looks like a lot of it's related to things that we've touched on, but maybe we could dive a little deeper so we can, uh, I don't know, grow. Yeah, I know that, uh, at the Open Wallet Foundation, like in the presentation that at least Sam share with me, like he's going to talk a little bit about like exactly this difference between the V1 and V2. So okay, uh, great. He's going to definitely uh, talk to them on on that meeting. Okay, there was one other thing that I wanted to share um, that maybe we can talk about. I meant for us to get to it today, but that's okay. Uh, so in this. Uh, I'll just pull it down here and just show it to everybody and I'll post the link so that people can read up on it. Uh, I came across this comparison of DWN versus, you know, uh, Didcom uh, versus Carry. And again, this is all being prompted, uh, I think, by the trust banning uh, protocol talk. So I think it's all good. But it, it, this felt like a very awkward comparison to me. And maybe that's just how it's supposed to be because there's only, uh, you know, a certain amount of overlap between these. But uh, all that to say, if anyone's interested in seeing something, you know, reading through that, I'll post that there. And maybe that's something that we can talk about um, next week. Would, would you guys like to discuss that next week? Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do, do we think it's worthwhile? And uh, did come. Mm -hmm. Okay. Roto, do you think that that's worth bringing up in the uh, meeting this, uh, the, the user group meeting this uh, afternoon? Not to put you on the spot. It's okay if. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, which one is it? It's the this HackMD where they talk about yeah, yeah. Uh, DWN versus Didcom versus Carry. I think. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know how much they've discussed the uh, the TSP, but uh, yeah, there, there are a lot of question marks on that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Right. Okay, we're all learning. We're on a journey here. Okay, great to uh, have everybody. Thank you for coming. And uh, yeah, we'll meet again next week. And, you know, maybe I'll see you in the other meetings uh, today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.